Well, good morning, everybody. It is so good to be with everybody today and be able to worship with you. Uh, My wife and I jumped on a plane from Phoenix, Arizona uh, early yesterday afternoon where it was a pleasant 114 degrees. It's a dry heat, though. It's a dry heat, okay? So it only felt like 113, okay? Um, But we just, we want to get back. We want to worship with you guys today. So thank you so much for being here. I want to ask a question, and I don't know if this is going to backfire on me or not, but this weekend... Um, my family and I, we celebrate 19 years uh, being here at Bridgepoint Church. And I'm just curious. Um, I, I, I probably have, have run everybody off that was with us back in 2005. But if you've been with us since August of 2005, can you just raise your hand just, just real quick? Okay, okay, a few, a few, a few. Can I just say thank you to those of you who are raising your hand? Thank you for putting up with me. Okay, for 19 years. Um, Thank you for the grace and the mercy uh, that you have shown me uh, since day one uh, of being here. And I just wanted to say thank you for sticking with us. And uh, the the Lord is doing some amazing things uh, in and through Bridgepoint Church. And uh, we're so thankful for that. And we're thankful for all of you who have joined us along the way. Um, Some of you recently, some of you maybe not back in August of 05, but sometime since then, and I just want to say thank you so much for your faithfulness to God's house. So today we're going to continue on in this series we're calling Summer in the Psalms, and um, I I want to encourage you, if you have a physical Bible, to turn to Psalm chapter 100. Psalm chapter 100 is where we'll be this morning, and this book of Psalms is a very, it's a very personal book. Like this book is filled with so many emotions and so many thoughts that cover like the entire spectrum. Like in, in, in some verses, you read the psalmist saying that, you know, Lord, I, I, I worship you and I praise you and, and I thank you for your faithfulness. And then, like, in a, the very next psalm, the, the psalmist says, why have you forsaken me, and why don't you care about me, and why do you hate me? And, and then, but just a few verses later, that same psalmist will say, but I still trust in you because you're good and because you're faithful. But, but the emotions are all over the place. And the thoughts are all over the place. It, it kind of reminds me of, of like a toddler, right? Where, where the toddler is, is just having an absolute meltdown because a sibling just simply walked by the tower that they were creating. And then like within minutes, with tears in their eyes, and they're just still crying while eating ice cream, right? Hey, this is so good, right? Just the emotions are just all over the place. And this is kind of what we see here all throughout the book of Psalms. There are times where the people are rejoicing and praising God and thanking God. And there's other times where the people are lamenting because life is hard. And because life just doesn't make any sense to them. And they're trying real hard to figure things out moving forward. There's some times where where people are singing praises to God, which we're going to look at today. But then there's other times where people are begging for and asking for forgiveness, which we're going to look at next Sunday. So it bears a question as we get into Psalm chapter 100. Psalm chapter 100 is a psalm of thanksgiving. Like the psalmist is really expressing his gratitude. It's a psalm that answers this question, why should we keep praising God? Like not just today, but why should we continue to praise God? Think about the hundreds and maybe thousands of times that you have been in a church service. I I, I thought back on my life, I'm 52, and, and I was in church like soon after the day I was born. So just like one time a week, one Sunday morning a week, like I've been in church probably over 2,500 times in my life. And some of you are like, 
That's nothing, right, compared to me. And I'm just talking about one time a week. I'm not talking about old school when we went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, had visitation like Monday or Thursday night. I'm just talking about one time a week. I've probably been in church over 2,500 times in my lifetime. And it bears the question, why? Why, why, why should we keep going? Why should we keep coming to church? Why should we keep praising God? Now, the first 18 years, the answer was easy. I didn't have a choice, right? Mama didn't say to me, hey, honey, do you want to wake up and go to church today? I never heard that question. What I heard from my mom was this, hey, get up. We're leaving in 15 minutes, and if you're not in the car, I'm going to heal you in the name of Jesus. That's what I heard growing up. So that was kind of decided for me. But why keep going to church when we do the same thing week after week after week after week? Now, let me let you know what my intent is not. My intent is not to get you to think, you know what? You're right. Why do we come to church every single week? What I'm saying is this. This psalm we're going to look at today answers that question for us. Why we should keep praising God. Why we should continue to be faithful to the house of God. So let's stand real quick for the reading of God's word. Just five verses today in Psalm chapter 100. Psalm chapter 100, beginning in verse 1. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Now let me pause there. How many of you have ever referenced that verse because you think, I have a horrible voice? So that's a verse that you know. Anybody? Anybody? No? All right, good. You're good singers. I didn't know if Psalm 100 verse 1 was anybody's life verse, okay? Here we go, verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. God, I pray that you would bless our time together today. God, I pray that you would take possibly a very familiar psalm. And and would you open our eyes to something new. May, May something fresh resonate in our hearts today that maybe we haven't seen before from this particular psalm. So God, please bless our time together as we study your word, and we will give you all the honor and glory and praise for everything that takes place. We ask all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Now, there's a couple different things here in the text that really prompt us to always come back to grateful praise. We need to always come back to grateful praise. And if you look at the text, you see that the text is really broken down into two sections. <coughs> Excuse me. Verses 1, 2, and 4 are going to show us this call to response. That to, to respond, that we're called to respond. And then verses 3 and 5 are going to give us the reasons why we should do that. So here's point number one. We are all called to respond to the Lord. Look at verse 1 again, and, and, and please understand, like the last couple of weeks, there's only five verses. We're, gonna, we're not necessarily going to go in order, but we're going to kind of jump around a lot between these five verses. But verse 1 again, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Now, a couple observations from that verse. This pouring back of our praise should be made how? With joy. But like we should be doing this with with, with a heart of joy, a heart of gratitude. The verses say, make a joyful noise. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. What are those things? 
those are all things that we should be doing. Those are action things that, that should be found in our life. Look at the beginning of verse five again. For or because, why? The Lord is good. So what we see here is there's a response and there's a reason for it. There's a response and there's a reason for it. God wants us to respond to him with joy. Like our response to God should be coming from our heart. It proceeds out of our mouth and it should be a response that is filled with joy. It's also meant to be a purposeful response. Look at how many different words in this psalm are action words, right? Make a joyful noise. Serve the Lord. Come into his presence. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, right? Those are all action steps. Those are things that should be done on purpose and for a purpose, and we need to understand that in, in, in our response and our praise to God. God wants us to purposefully respond in joy. Make a joyful noise. Our response is to be verbal. Our response is to be vocal. But don't make any mistake about it. It's not, he's not implying that the only response that we're ever going to have is going to be a verbal response. Because doesn't the Bible allude to there's times in our lives where whatever reason, whatever's going on, that we can't even come up with words to say to him? But he knows what we mean. He knows what we're trying to say. So there's times where we can't even... We can't even figure out the words to say to him in praise. But then there's other times where we are to be vocal in our praise. We're to be verbal in our praise. And this is what this particular psalm is alluding to. A couple of weeks ago, a couple Sundays ago, and I'm still not, I'm still not over this, but, but I was like, I was, I was really, really, really ill, but I still preached that Sunday. And that was a Sunday where I did not participate in the singing. I, I, I sat backstage in a chair, and I just listened. And I didn't know who was singing and who wasn't singing. I didn't know who was singing good and who wasn't singing good. The only thing I heard from back there was this massive volume of praise to God. And folks, let me tell you, it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing to listen to. It was a beautiful thing to be able to hear. Now, the psalmist is saying that there should always be this joyful noise that's rising up to the Lord. That There should be so many people singing that there is just this massive volume that's filling a room whether it's some of you many of you were there whether it's 13,000 people gathered together on a Thursday night in Little Caesars Arena or whether there's 400 people gathered in two services at Bridgepoint Church like there should be this massive volume that fills the room of us singing praises to God. Now let's also see this, this verbal and vocal response is directed somewhere, right? Where does it go? It's pointed to the Lord. It's pointed to a recipient. Look at the verses again. Make a, <coughs> make a joyful noise to who? To the Lord. Serve who? The Lord. Come into his presence. Enter his gates. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. But don't miss this. Do you see the end of verse 1 there? Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Who? All the earth. So it's not just the community of faith that God wants praise from. 
But anybody who God creates, God wants praise from that person. All the earth should be making a joyful noise to the Lord. God desires that everybody worship him. He desires that everybody would praise him. And not only does he desire it, but the text is going to show us in a little bit that he deserves it. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. The psalmist now begins to unpack how we should respond. Look at verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Now, this idea of service, it doesn't show up anywhere else in, in this psalm. Like, this is the only reference to the service aspect. But it is stating that not only do you respond to the Lord through singing, but we also are to respond to the Lord through service, through what we do. Now, what serving look like to the people that this is being written to, they would look at serving a little different than we would today. We look at serving as, you know what? I'm going to use my giftedness and I'm going to bless somebody, right? I'm going to help somebody out. I'm going to help the church out. And don't get me wrong, that's true, okay? But when you play a part and you serve the people in the ministry of Bridgepoint Church, you do help the ministry of Bridgepoint Church. But we view serving as an activity. The people that this psalm was written to, they view service as their identity. Not necessarily something that they did, but it represented who they were. It was their identity in Christ. They, they, they identified themselves as servants of God. Therefore, they did what? They served. They worked. In other words, because they were chosen by God, because they were called by God, they thought, you know what? I need to be involved in the work of God because that's who I am. I'm a child of God. I am part of this called out assembly they saw it as the identity of a servant. The community of faith in our psalm would understand it to mean this way. Service equals obedience. Service equals obedience. Service equals work. Serving equals worship. Serving equals sacrifice. They would have put more emphasis on serving, not necessarily in what they did, but who they were. It's how they identified as being children of God. There's a phrase in, in one of the verses that says, serve the Lord with gladness. In other words, live it out. Live it out, man. Don't be embarrassed by it. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't try to hide it. If you've said yes to Jesus, you're a child of God. Live like it. Live like it. Like, be proud of it. Embrace it. Embrace who you are in God. Serve the Lord. Now, some of you are thinking right now, all right, I know this is going to happen. I know good old Pastor Craig is going to, like, make his plea that he makes every once in a while, and there's going to be a plea for me to be, me to be made feel guilty to go serving Kids Point and everything like that. Well, yes and no, Okay. Because we always need help. We, all, we, need, we always need help across the board. <laughs> but I, I want you to understand something about serving. Yes, the church benefits from serving. But do you know who else benefits from serving? The person who is serving. The person who is doing something. But, but don't be mistaken into thinking incorrectly. Because... Serving is not limited to the local church, right? Like, if your mindset is, you know what? 
Man, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bless these people and I'm just gonna use my giftedness and you know what, I'm just gonna bless everybody's socks off and man, I'm gonna be so helpful. If, if that's your idea of service, then your definition has been restricted. If, if that's all you think about when it comes to serving. If you view serving as, as a chore, right? Like, ah, I don't really want to, but I guess I have to. Well, I think your definition of serving is restricted. It's, it's limited here. Now, from this passage of scripture, service is not just an activity. It, it's a means of responding to the Lord. What if you thought about it that way? You know what, man, I need to get plugged in, right? I, I need to serve. I need to get involved. And, and, and it's not even, you know, something that you do per se in regards to serving, but in your mind, you're the, you know what? I'm responding to God because, man, he is God and he is good. Like, what if that was your mindset when, when it comes to serving the Lord? Now, where's all this coming from? Where's all this supposed to come from? Our heart. All of it's supposed to come from our heart. That this, this joy and this gladness and, and this thanksgiving and gratefulness, all of it is to come from our heart. Serving here in verse 2 is the only time it's mentioned in the entire psalm. Everything else references singing or praising God. So let's understand the context of the psalm. The overall context of the psalm is worship. But what the psalmist is trying to stress is that, you know what? Yes, you can worship through singing, and yes, you should worship through singing, but do you know how else one can worship? Through serving. Through serving. It's not just singing, and it's not just serving. It's both. So because I see my identity as the Lord's servant, my response in worship is going to be that of singing and serving. And that's how I choose to respond to the Lord. Let's keep looking at the text. The rest of verse 2 says this. (coughs) Come into his presence with singing. Verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Now, you read those two verses, you're like, what is this coming into stuff? Like, what is this entering into stuff? This is Old Testament temple language, right? And that's who the audience is. That's who it's being written to. If one were to come to the temple to worship, what did they have to do? They had to come in through the gates, and they had to enter into the courts, right? They, they didn't go into the Holy of Holies. They didn't go into the holy place. Most of their singing what, what took place out in the courts. Now, when you came to church this morning, I, I know you walked through a door. Like, don't be a smart aleck or anything. But you didn't have to walk through gates. Like, our auditorium doesn't resemble a temple court, but this is where our praise and, and our singing corporately takes place you know why because the book of hebrews makes it clear that it's through now for us not necessarily in writing this psalm but now for us we come into the presence of god how through his son the lord jesus christ we we don't necessarily it's not about worshiping in this temple or that temple and those are the only places where the lord's going to be Isn't that what Jesus told the the lady at the well, right? It's not about worshiping on this mountain. It's not about worshiping in that temple. But because I himself, because Jesus has come, now you can have access to God anywhere. And this is what the book of Hebrews stretches. So we need to take the Old Testament language and put it into New Testament context. As for God's people, we are to respond to God, and we respond to God through who? Through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we have, if you've said yes to Jesus, think about this. If you've said yes to Jesus, you have full access 
to the God of this universe through his son. Through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. What an incredible thought to consider. It's not about worshiping in a certain place, although we want people to come and gather and worship in a certain place. What I'm trying to stress is this. The scripture calls us to a response. And sometimes that response is singing. And other times, according to the text, that response is serving. Look at verse 4 again. This singing, this praise, this entering his gates, it is done how? With thanksgiving. We have thanksgiving in our hearts. The entire psalm is, is a psalm of gratitude. You, you, he's just expect, he's expressing his gratitude. Our serving should be grounded in gratitude. Our singing should be grounded in gratitude. You know, growing up, when my parents would, would ask me to do something or tell me to do something, all the time growing up, my response was, oh, yes, mother, it would be my pleasure to do so. <laughs> I didn't work at Chick-fil-A, folks, okay? That was not my response. Most of the time, my response was what? Why? Why? Like, do this. Why? Why? Like I, they, they could have been saving my life from something happening. And before I would listen, I'd say, why? Right? Tell me why. We always want to know why. So in our text, we are called to respond. Why? Why? Why do we need to respond? What reasons do we see here in our text? And verses 3 and 5 are going to provide the reasons why. Verse 3. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse 5. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. So the first point was we've all been called to respond to the Lord. Here's the second point, and it's just as simple. We have reason to respond to the Lord. Like every single one of us have reason to respond to the Lord. Look at verse 3 again, okay? Verse 3 starts with the broadest of reasons, and then it begins to narrow down. But it starts with the largest one. Verse 3. Know that the Lord, he is who? God. What's the psalmist saying? This God whom you are worshiping, this God whom you are responding to, he is not a God. He is not one of many gods. He is the one and only true God. Amen? Amen. That's who we are responding to. That's who we are worshiping. That's who we are praising. You know, what's interesting is the fact that the Egyptians had an entire system of gods. The Greeks had an entire system of gods. The, The Romans had an entire system of gods. The Israelites were monotheistic. What does that mean? Their belief was in one God. The the Egyptians and the Greeks and the Romans, they were polytheistic. What does that mean? They had a belief in many gods. But you know what's interesting? Is, Is the Greeks and the Egyptians and the Romans, even though there were many gods, there was still one God that was more important than the other gods. There was still one that, that, that was just looked at a little differently than the other ones. For the Egyptians, it was the sun god. For the Greeks, it was Zeus. But what the psalmist is saying here in this particular text is that, hey, all roads don't lead to the same mountaintop. Like, there is one god, there is the god at the top of the mountain that 
as an Egyptian and a Greek and a Roman, you're not going to find that by worshiping your gods. Like, he is the God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. The author is starting with with the greatest reason why you should worship God and respond to God in worship is simply this. Because he is God. End End of sentence. End of statement. Like that is the greatest reason why you and I should respond to him in worship because he is the God. But what else is he? Because we said he, the psalmist starts with the broadest of reasons, but then he lists some other things as well. We should also respond in worship because he is the creator. So why should people be praising God? Because he's God and because he is the creator. The verse said, it is he who made us and we are his. So the psalmist is saying that you have every reason to respond to God because he is God and because you are his. You belong to him. You were created by him. Therefore, our only response should be praise, should be worship. Why? Because he is God. Why? Because he is creator. But don't miss the other part of that verse. And they belong to him. And because they belong to him, they need to respond to him. So if you've said yes, right, to Jesus, if you've said yes to God and you belong to God, guess what? We need to respond to him. Like we are called to respond to him. Think about this. Every single wrong world view starts with someone denying God as their creator. Because if God is their creator, then that means they belong to him and they need to respond to him. So they try to deny God as being the creator because they don't want to belong to anybody in this wrong world view. Why should we respond to God? Because he is God. Because he created us. And also I want you to see from the text, because he is our shepherd. He's our shepherd. We read, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. This shows the personal side of God. Like the first couple of verses talked about God's sovereignty. But now we see the personal aspect of God. Things like caring and protecting and leading. So for those of us who are in Christ, we've said yes to Jesus. According to John chapter 10, Jesus is our good shepherd. And when you read that passage of scripture, it talks about how what? That the shepherd know the sheep and the sheep know the shepherd. That the shepherd calls them by name and they come. Why? Because they're familiar with his voice. You cannot be familiar with the voice of someone that you aren't familiar with. But this chapter shows us the personal aspect of God being, of Jesus being our good shepherd. What am I trying to stress? We have reason to respond to God in praise because He is God, because He is Creator. Because he is the good shepherd. Look at verse 5 again. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. So we respond to a God who is sovereign and personal. But we also respond to a God who is good and faithful. God is faithful. How do we know that the Lord is good? Well, what does the rest of the verse say? Because he is steadfast in his love. He is faithful. What does that mean? He can be counted on. He can be trusted in. 
He's never let you down before and he's not about to start now. He is faithful. So the statement is made at the beginning of verse 5 and the proof is listed after. The Lord is good and I know that the Lord is good. Why? Because he is steadfast in his love. And he is steadfast in his mercy. He's good because his faithfulness endures forever. Forever. Our God is faithful, amen? God been faithful in your life, amen? I hope so. Let me go back to the beginning of the Old Testament and just walk through this real quickly before we wrap this up. God was faithful in the garden. He was faithful in choosing Abraham. He was faithful in blessing Jacob when Jacob didn't deserve to be blessed. But he was still faithful. He was faithful in protecting and using Joseph when when his brothers sold him out. He was faithful to call and to use Moses. He was faithful to sustain Joshua and the judges. God was faithful in blessing through David and Solomon. God was faithful in speaking through the prophets. He was faithful to reestablish through Ezra and Nehemiah. Now, don't miss this. Because by the time we get to the New Testament, we get to the mountaintop of his faithfulness through the person and the work of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God sending us his son not only showed us the greatest amount of love, but also the greatest amount of faithfulness. He is faithful. What do we see all throughout the pages of God's word? Our God is faithful, amen? He's faithful. Not only does he desire us to praise him, He deserves us to praise him because he is God. He is creator. He is the good shepherd. He is faithful in everything that he does. So verses 1, 2, and 4 call us to a response. And verses 3 and 5 give us a list of reasons to do it and to continue to do it. So I hope today... That you don't leave here thinking, man, why do I go to church every single Sunday? But I hope you leave here today knowing that's why I go to church every Sunday. That's why I'm faithful to the house of God and faithful in worshiping God because he is faithful. As we transition into this time of communion this first Sunday of the month. Can I just encourage us all to do so with an attitude of gratitude? I mean, that's what, the, that's what the psalm is emphasizing here. Can we just express our thankfulness for everything that God has done for us through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ? Before we partake of the elements today, can we just reflect on the goodness of God? Can we just reflect on the faithfulness of our God? I mean, God loved us so much that he did what? He gave. He gave. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. He sacrificed his perfect son so that we would have a chance to have our sins forgiven and spend an eternity in heaven with him one day. Folks, God is just that good. And he loves us that much. Before we partake of the communion elements, I just want to reread this psalm that we've looked at today. This psalm of thankfulness. This psalm of gratitude. And maybe these verses will mean a little something different to us now it says make a joyful noise to the lord all the earth serve the lord with gladness come into his presence with singing 
Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Can I just encourage you to bow your head and close your eyes? And let's just have a time of reflection this morning. And let's reflect on the goodness of our God before we partake of the elements today. God, as we come before you today, we come with a heart of thankfulness to you because you are God and you are good. God, thank you for loving us as much as you did by sending your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay a penalty for sin that we couldn't pay ourselves. God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love that never runs out. Thank you for your mercy that continues to be shown to us on a daily basis. God, I pray that there would not be one person here today who would leave not knowing why we should be responding in praise to a faithful God. God, I pray that you would be able to continue to have your will and your way in each and every one of our hearts and lives. And that, God, this attitude of gratitude may not even just be something that we express right now here on a Sunday. But, God, you are good and you are faithful Monday through Saturday as well. So help us to live our lives that way moving forward. Help us to know why you want us to respond to you in praise and then help us to always respond in obedience. God, thank you for this time this morning. Thank you for communing with us. Thank you for being with us through, your, through the Holy Spirit of God. God, please have your will and way in our lives. We ask all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. The Bible says that after they'd given thanks and and prayed that they ate the bread together. So let's all eat together at this time. And then it says they did the same thing in the same manner with the cup that represents that shed blood of Jesus Christ. So let's all drink together at this time. I want to invite you to stand with me, if you would, please, as we wrap up our time together today. And I don't know what the Lord's impressed upon your heart. I don't know what he's reminded you of today. I don't know what he's introduced to you today. But God Almighty is always calling for a response And if we belong to him, because we've said yes to him, we should always respond. So you respond however the Holy Spirit is impressing upon your heart today to respond. But just be faithful to him as we sing this final song.